had a great stay at Wonderland Hiker Refuge. Recommend it. it they are so nice. Uh, they invited me to breakfast and dinner. Uh, fed me wonderful vegetarian food. And just a nice place to stay. I was the only one staying there, so that was even nicer. It was private. <laughs> they had a big dog and uh, the Great Pyrenees and cats. Just crossed under Interstate 66. And here's our trip head. We definitely already passed 900, but it's beautiful. Made in flowers. If you get a chance to stay at Wonderland Hiker Refuge, do it. They've got a kitchen downstairs and cots with mattresses on them. They have fresh eggs from their chickens in the refrigerator. They have a coffee pot and coffee. They have cereals, um, bagels, different types of breads in there, milk all kinds of things, whatever you need is <laughs> there. They have a nice hiker box that had a lot of food in it and all the medical supplies <laughs> you could possibly imagine. It's based on donations, so there's no set charge. You just donate some money to them. And they are just so nice there. And the animals are all friendly and sweet. <laughs> I had a, their orange cat would not leave me alone last night. I was editing videos and that cat was on me, purring, rubbing on me. <laughs> He's the sweetest cat. Oh, and they have good Wi-Fi, So I was able to upload and edit a bunch of videos while I was there. That's pretty much what I did the entire time. Charged up all of my stuff. So that also is nice when you get a place that has good Wi-Fi. Climbing the mountain out of town. <laughs> Front Royal is where, where I was. And there's always a mountain <laughs> coming out with a full resupply. Really though, I only got maybe a pound of stuff over and above what I had. So my pack isn't a lot heavier. I've been carrying a good bit of food because I ate at the uh, waysides in Shenandoah Park, so I didn't eat all my food. So I still have a few days <laughs> worth of food in my pack. I'm about four miles in. I've got three to the next water source and I'm out of water, <laughs> but that's fine. I can make it three more miles. Um, the uh, last water source is a seasonal one and it was gone. There was absolutely no water, it was totally dry. So I'll be going three more miles getting water. I've got 12 miles to get to the roller coaster in Virginia. It's called the roller coaster because it's mountain after mountain after mountain <laughs> but they're smaller it's just a lot of uphill downhill uphill downhill like a roller coaster i'm not sure i'll get there today since i've already that would be a 16 mile day so i'll try to at least get to that point if not go a little bit farther and 
I'm getting pretty close to the thousand mile mark too. Here is my water source. Looks like a good one. Easy to fill a bottle from that. Hey, I think I'm getting to the top of this mountain. It's still a jungle, but at least somebody cleaned out the trail so we can do it. Still going a little uphill, but it's not as bad as it was. About seven miles in. And I did have some downhill and uphill. It wasn't seven miles of climbing completely. I think it might have been two mountains. smells so good in here. Something's blooming and boy does it smell wonderful. A little bit of a tight squeeze though. I'm entering Sky Meadows State Park now. Stealth camping is not allowed. We have to stay at a shelter or a camping campsite in here. So that's what I will do. I may hike out though today. I'm not sure how long the park is. But I still have quite a few miles to go today. I'm still feeling good. I've been hiking kind of slow, but I'm hiking all day so I can still make miles even going slow. I think I'm at least eight or nine miles in now. Harper's Ferry, 32.8 miles. That's the psychological halfway point of the AT. The actual halfway point is a little beyond that, but still, it's pretty cool to see that on a sign. found what smells so good. Ah, oh, smells so good. I have this on my fence at home. Here's a rabbit. I'm seeing a lot of rabbits. It's paying attention to me. Hi, rabbit. Gotta walk down the trail. Getting off the AT, into the Ambassador's White House Trail, which is almost half a mile, so almost a full mile out and back. But it's supposed to have a great view, and it's pretty clear today. There's still a little bit of haze. So I'd really love to see the view and, and it's warm and sunny and the trail's in the sun, so it'll be a little hot. Already a pretty view from the start of the trail. It is a long walk. <laughs> Hopefully it's up here soon. This is the Piedmont Overlook.
I did not know you could come all the way down here and look. This is very cool. Stock growing metal. Very pretty. May the winds carry our ashes to the fields we fought to protect. Just stepping down the stairs, there's a copperhead laying down there. I'll show you from up here. See it right there? And his head's pointing the direction I would have stepped. Good thing I was looking down. That copperhead just went under the step. You can just see his tail right under there. I am so glad I did not go down there. So Washington DC would be right over there. There, if the trees weren't so big, you sh should be able to see Dulles Airport. And I was going to walk down here, down in that grass, where the copperhead was, down those steps, to get down there to see if I could see around those trees. But I'm not that worried about it, really. <laughs> I don't think I'll do that, because if there's one copperhead, there's probably more over here. Okay, headed back up, watching my steps carefully. Yeah, this looks like a good habitat for copperheads with all these rocks and probably rattlers too. So I'm heading back with a good shot of adrenaline after seeing that copperhead down the step I was going to take. Heading back to the AT and watching my steps carefully. Yeah, I should be able to hike a lot farther tonight and without all that adrenaline. <laughs> I was warned, I read the, some of the comments on Far Out, and it did say that people had spotted copperheads here before and to be very cautious. So I was actually looking out for them. I always do anyway, just a habit from living in South Carolina and having them in my yard, but still, it was nice of folks to put a warning on there that there were copperheads around the monument and to be very cautious. Now that one's a baby, he's small. Small little bunny, aren't you cute? Are you just gonna let me walk right up to you? I guess so. Run, little dude. Come on. Get off the trail. There you go. Good job, bud. Well, I just saw my first bear, barely. He just was crashing through the underbrush. He saw me and took off. He was right in here. And boy, it sounded like a tree was falling when he took off. I scared him to death, apparently. He just kept running and running. He's back there somewhere.
not see him now, but it sounded like he went pretty far. I mean, he was taking out bushes with him. That's very cool. I barely saw him. He was kind of a black blur in the bushes. So, this has been a great day. I finally saw my bear. Saw a copperhead. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he's long gone, I'm pretty sure. He just took off. Was taking trees and bushes out with him. <laughs> he was terrified. Unless there's another one down here. I don't think we're going to get to see him again. All the backcountry areas I've been in looking for bears. And then I am hiking through almost a near a town, near a highway, and that's where I see the bear. Just crossed that road. 5017. See the white blaze right in the center. I'm out of the state park now. That road was the border, so now I can camp again anywhere I find a flat spot. <laughs> so passed all the way through there in one day. Whew. I think I've only done 11 or 12 miles today. <laughs> but I got a late start since I stayed at the hostel and didn't get to the trail till around 10, I think. And then I took a side trail to see that view in the Copperhead. Another steep up, it looks like. Something had a big fight here. Look at all the fur. It oh. just keeps going. That's something. It used to be something. Clumps of hair and skin just keep on going up. And then, here's some bones. Whatever it was, it was black and very small. Because that looks like a, either a hip or a shoulder bone. Another water source. But I just got water in the last water source, so I don't need it. About a mile back. So I'll climb over these tricky rocks. I'm not going to do it with a cell phone though. I'll probably need my poles. It's starting to get dark. It's about 7.30 and I've got a little over a mile to go to get to the shelter that I'm heading for unless I find a stealth spot before then. 
to camp. Shelter only has, I think they said three tent spots. Sometimes I'll say that and there'll actually be more when you get there. If people, you know, share. But I could sleep in the shelter. I don't really like sleeping in shelters much. If the tent spots are full. So we'll see. I'm going to climb up this little hill or mountain, a small mountain to get to the shelter. At the end of the day, it's always harder. Those last climbs, especially in that last mile, because once you decide you're going to stop, that last mile is really tiring. Your body knows somehow that you're about to stop. <coughs> Just breathe the bug. Um, so your body seems to know when you're about to stop, either that or it's just used to stopping at a certain time and just starts to wind down. And that last mile seems so long. It's like two or three miles. It just goes so slow. This is a cool old fence. Made it to the trail to the shelter. Nice shelter with a place to eat under, a fire pit. Really nice. <laughs> 